Welcome back to the studio, and with that, Thingy takes a 1-0 lead over We Hurt in this Losers Brackets Finals best of three. Yeah, yeah. this bomber setups, man. They, I mean, they seem to be the bane of, uh, of We Hurt. Like, yeah. they just... Dropping one match in a best of three isn't the end of the world by any means. What's actually a much, much worse sign for We Heard is the fact that they just don't appear to have a counter for the bomber setup. The fact that they brought the Varger team after trying to ban out the bombers suggests to me that they don't feel comfortable with any of their counters. And uh, they're going to need to have a counter for the next match because if I'm thingy, I'm just going to bring a bomber team. Cause so what about a bomber team versus a bomber team? What are the, what are, like, the key things that you have to know when flying a bomber setup uh, to well win there's, that match? There's one first layer of thing that you need to know which is warping at the right range. Yes, which <laughs> in this in this case, and of course thingy training with warlords is probably going to be following this advice all the time, is usually 50 kilometers. Mm -hmm. uh, for a team that's very mobile like this with the stealth bombers, you just always want to be at max range. And yeah, the danger is if you warp in at zero, then they can get a bomb run off on you if they send their bombers in at 30. So that's uh, something you always want to avoid in a But bomb in bombers versus meta. bombers, you could both bomb each other. <laughs> yes. If you warp it in the proper range. We have stats ready for this match. Mm -hmm. Let's get them up on the screen. The big thing here, we heard lost their Marauders, so they're not going to be able yep. to bring that again, so we're not seeing this setup again. Yeah, I think I think Marauders are not going to be a big thing in this final day. I think people all have counters for them. I think they're great for picking up matches early, yeah. but I don't think they're gonna. we're going to yeah. see any team bring them today. Yeah, I mean, we heard can't bring the Marauder, but I think if they brought the Marauder again, they, they would, would just lose, lose again. Yeah. Um, this is not a setup that I think it has take on the bomber setups. We actually intentionally reduce the bomber points to provide a very good counter to Marauders. And that's exactly what Thingy was able to do with them. Mm -hmm. So was this just a doomed match from the start for We Hurt? Or was there anything they could have done? Or, or something that <sighs> Thingy could have messed up that would have thrown the match in We Weird's favor? We saw some good damping mm -hmm. um, that allowed them to uh, almost take down a purifier early. And then I think that helped them get the, the purifier that they did kill eventually. Um, that was really their main hope. That what they needed to be able to do was get in, tackle the Aneros, uh, get him damped. Because those purifiers would get shredded by rapid light missile caracals when they don't have the support from the Aneros. So if they could could have kept him out of the fight a little bit longer, um, then they could have won that way. But that would it's an incredibly tall uh, task to try to get done. Yep, exactly. Yep. And you would have to have moved moved in, sort of try and pin the bombers against the edge of the arena so that your characters can actually catch them, put them down, supply that DPS that you need to take them down. Uh, but it's uh, it's definitely. Uh, a strong advantage for the Thingy team started coming into the match with those sorts of setups. Yeah, I mean, when we saw the setups, we kind of realized right away this is not what we hear. It's coming in here wanting to fight. Yeah, uh, they banned out the the two command shifts that they had seen so far in the tournament, paired with bomber teams, um, hoping to ban out bomber teams, I assume. And uh, then Thingy just sort of sidestepped him and said, "We can do this with any command yeah. ship." Yeah, exactly. So, so if you're We Hurt, what do you do now? I mean, they, they, they've shown us that they don't really have a counter uh, up and ready for these bomber teams. So you just go, hmm, let's just gimmick this and copy their setup and try and beat them I with it. Or well, do, you, do you just kind of accept that you don't have a counter to that and hope that they switch it up? What do you do? There are things that you can try to do. Uh, so, like, the bombers using torps, uh, not going to be applying their DPS nearly as well against smaller targets, trying to dodge out some of that damage, maybe a strong damp team that's going to make them have to come in close. Yep. If you just stack a bunch of damps, like an enchan enchanter-style setups with Celestises. But the, the thing is, is... Do you really have the strength to get in and brawl with the command ships? That's the other problem you have to do. You have to deal with that long-range damage application from the stealth bombers and then still be able to win the close-up fight versus command ships. Yeah, it, it is very, very difficult. Um, winning the E-War battle is one way you can do it. Yeah. Uh, really strong damps, but uh, there's going to be E-War on the other side as well. That's actually, when, it, when you get a bomber mirror matchup, it often comes down to who applies their damps better, uh, especially if they start bringing out uh, some of the higher mid-slot bombers like the uh, Mad Manticores and the Nemesi. Mm -hmm. That would be one option. It would be to try to bring a similar setup, yeah. but bring instead of the Purifiers, Manticores and Nemesis, and uh, try to use Damp Superiority. Or maybe the solution is just more Stealth Bombers. Bring six. Let's <laughs> bring six Stealth Bombers, yeah. I like eight? that. Eight <laughs> Stealth Bombers. Wow, that would be crazy. Don't do that. Crazy. Please, <laughs> please don't bring eight Stealth Bombers. Eight so Stealth Bombers and two Vindicators? <laughs> <laughs> that would be ten pilots, which is not allowed in the new yeah, Open. <laughs> So we actually have a competition running right now where you can uh, tweet us the name of your favorite team in this tournament uh, at the NEO2 hashtag, and we will randomly select a winner, and they will receive a collector's edition. So get those tweets in right about now. Do you know what I want to figure out? Yes. I want to figure out which side of our audience cheers the loudest. Is it, is it the left side or the right side? Because I have this theory. 
that the people who are sitting closer to us are going to get like a morale boost from being much closer to us. Yeah. Can we can we hear the left side cheer? Left side cheer. Not okay, right they're side. doing their left, so I'm going to yes. change my bet to the right side. Okay. Let's hear the right side cheer. That's definitely better. That yep, is yeah, definitely far superior. Right, right, right. yeah. But you know what, guys? We actually have an interview that we recorded yesterday before the stream with We Hurt that we're going to go into now. So we're going to hear their thoughts on how they've been doing so far in the tournament. This is, of course, before their matches yesterday, so bear that in mind. But they're going to talk a bit uh, about their tournament experience so far. So if we can get that rolling, that would be awesome. And we're back. Apparently, we had some uh, technical difficulties. I'm afraid you won't see my uh, uh, myself staring into a camera for 10 minutes, <laughs> trying not to be awkward, because that was really awkward. I, I, I'm not going to lie. I was doing the interview, and I was the only one on set, and I had only had the camera to talk to, so it was always like, yes, you Don't are lie. the person that is talking to me. And it was super weird. Don't lie. It wasn't technical difficulties. You just only whisper outside of this set. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so I sit next to him in day-to-day uh, -day work, and... He just only whispers all the time. We he mostly communicates right, just right. through text. Let's let's uh, let's uh, let's rewind that a little bit. Everybody, I want you to realize what he just said. He sits next to me at work. That is the stuff I have to deal with day to day. <laughs> Every single day. What? I have this guy, right? He has on to deal with right. he's actually the person that cheers for me every day when I walk into work. <laughs> Applause, flowers, uh, chocolates. Yes, mm. Sure. So, all right, we're actually going to have another go at this. See if we've uh, fixed the audio issues. Let's see if it works this time around. Cross all of our fingers. And welcome back. What is up, everybody? Uh, so apparently, uh, your theory is correct. Uh, it was actually me just uh, trolling everybody in the control room, yep. just whispering that entire interview. But that was a good interview. It, it really was. And I hope at one point well, you guys can actually listen to it. Maybe put it up on YouTube or something uh, if we get it, it fixed. Yeah. Uh, hopefully they'll get it fixed before this next yeah. match because it, it, it's kind of fitting. They, they were talking a bit about how it was for them coming into this tournament, being mm -hmm. a new team, and, and getting a lot of support and so on. And um, So... This is, uh, I'm just watching Twitch chat just <laughs> scroll by with everybody talking about how loud that was. Oh, yeah. uh, so loud. Yes. Can't hear anymore. Yes. It blew up my ears. But let's just, let's just uh, keep going talking about that last yeah, match. Yeah, so I actually do have the match queued up in our uh, iPad app. Let's do that. If we're that. able to pull That's that one up. Really, check out, really good uh, check out the backups we've got here for all of our technical difficulties. <laughs> let's try more technical things. All see right. If that breaks. See if it works. Yeah. Yes. yes. So I do have the match queued up. This is the match we just saw between Thingy and We Hurt, and we'll get to look at it hopefully on the screen. In it. There we are. Yes. All right. Yes. It's working. So this but there's, a, okay. there's a loading icon. Yeah, yeah. That's going to be there for a while. Don't worry. <laughs> um, it'll still work. Uh, what we're seeing here is the initial starting positions of the two teams. In red, we've got the Thingy team. In blue, we've got We Hurt. Uh, the entire Thingy team came in about 50 kilometers. The We Hurt team put their support back, but then brought their Varger Marauder in at about 30 kilometers from the beacon, a little bit closer. This is the same pattern we've seen from them in previous uh, matches where they've used it. I'm going to get the match started here and actually accelerate it a little bit. As it went forward, we actually saw the uh, Eoses from the Thingy team charging in 
pretty early. There's these are the two EOSs in that icon there for the command ship. Um, as the two teams exchange missiles across the field, you'll see there. And uh, they put all of their drones on the uh, first Caracal primary, or Cerberus primary of Zao Amadeus. Uh, chase them across the field. These are a lot of EOS drones and a lot of missiles after them. And he actually survived for quite a while. By the way, for people not used he to this interface... survived to the end mm -hmm. of the match. Yep. People uh, not used to this interface, the CCB Fozzie is indicating them with those white triangles targeting a ship there, just yes. so you know what we're talking about. Yeah, I can't, I'm can't. i waving my finger, but you, of course, can't yeah. see that. <laughs> uh, you can't just point <laughs> at things. Uh, it, this really came down to the ability to kill off the caracals as quickly as possible and keeping those um, purifiers alive. Uh, this is the first, I believe, the first carical that died. Uh, OMG Icehole. There he goes. Who just couldn't keep up with his tank. And Say that name again. Oh. OMG Isol. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he did drop down, and from that point on, it was really just a, a kind of continuous cleanup effort for the uh, thingy side. You'll see here oh, the Sentinel of fin Finitru um, dodging in and out of the fight. He piloted extremely well during this fight, kept himself alive, and was able to keep tackle on the um, Aneros for quite a long time. Yeah, look here at how close he was to the edge of the arena yeah, there. He pulled right out to the very edge of the arena, but then came back in and grabbed some very key tackle uh, right about this point as he's chasing the Aneros around. You know what? I think it's pretty awesome seeing like how they're flying. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of people think that PvP and EVE is kind of just press orbit and F1 and then leave the computer and go like tend your kids or something. But uh, Tend my kids? <laughs> like tend to your kids. Okay, tend to yes. your kids, okay. Um, but, but he's showing us there that, that good piloting actually requires uh, flying in wonky patterns. Double and, clicking uh, in space. Double clicking in space. Yes, it's a lot. Range management often ends up you're kind of zigzagging yeah. or bouncing over the place, yeah. It's pretty cool seeing that. Yeah, we follow Zao Amadeus' Caracal a bit more, uh, who eventually ended up flying his way all the way out of the arena while being chased by an executioner. Yeah. And at the end. There we and go. And that is it. And that was the, the By first the way, if you want to check match. out this match yourself, you can go yeah. to null-sec.com where they have another version of this viewer. Uh, I really appreciate it. I've been looking at the matches for the past weekends at my desk, uh, and it's tremendously helpful for sort of understanding the level of difficulty, the level of skill required in all these matches. It's yeah. not just bringing the right mm -hmm. setup, it's flying that setup to perfection. That's actually true. And I mean, this is what we see. Uh, we see tournament teams kind of face each other, and, and one is a one is a maybe a brand new team hasn't hasn't have a doesn't have a ton of tournament experience, but the other one is is something like Warlords of the Deep, and they could bring the the same setup uh, ten times, and it's just the amount of like miniature details that and how much yep. they matter, and and how ca how they can decide a match. It's it's just staggering. You don't really realize it, and it's really hard to kind of display it across the stream, uh, like through the stream kind of display the actual skill level of required. Yeah. A lot of people maybe sit at home and go like, <laughs> where's the deep? Those guys, I can do what <laughs> they do. I run level fours, bro. <laughs> and it's like, uh, then then uh, they, they go on and uh, face these guys and, and they just like, with yeah. all their miniature detail, like double clicking in space right there. Uh, I'm overheating my modules exactly there. I'm staying in these ranges from my teammates mm -hmm. and from the other enemy team and so on and so on. And they just completely crushed. Speaking yeah. of uh, Warlords of the Deep, I actually was talking to some team members from Warlords of the Deep yesterday, and I found out actually where they got their name. Uh, so they're actually all uh, big fans of Pirates of the Caribbean, but not the first one, the second two. Uh, uh. So, uh, and the way essentially Warlords of the Deep and Hydra Reloaded in general works is uh, uh, Garmin is a lot like Davy Jones, and you make a contract with him uh. for a hundred years of uh, serving on the tournament team, and he, you turn into a weird sea monster, uh, but it actually, when you have multiple tentacles, you can pilot much more efficiently. Oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I just want to clarify, uh, I don't have anything against uh, in mission runners. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, and that's one of the things, like, uh, it was just, uh, yeah. It, it definitely is a lot more hard work practicing than a lot of people realize to be get to this kind of level in the tournament. But it is also something that actually a whole lot of our players can do. It's yes. It doesn't require some kind of um, innate skill that only some people, that only a tiny percentage of people have. Unless you, you have tentacles. Unless you have te <laughs> tentacles help. <laughs> but uh, it's something that m most EVE players are capable of getting onto this level with enough commitment. It really just comes down to how much you care about performing well in the tournament, how much you're willing to practice, yeah. doing things like what we were 
you're, what you just mentioned we heard is going to be doing for next year and focusing a lot of your training around what is good for the tournament rather than yep. what you might use elsewhere. Uh, that's the kind of thing that you, the teams that come back to these tournaments and do well year after year after year, they're doing it because of the commitment. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And <laughs> I just had, had the, that voice in my ear say, I'm, I'm afraid to suggest it, but we're going to try the interview again. <laughs> so let's see if we can make it work. Cross fingers and toes this time. This time. Right. Everyone in the time, audience, cross your fingers. The charm. Third I order you. The charm. Cross your fingers. There we go. They're holding yeah, up they're the doing fingers. It, they're doing it. Let's go. I am here with Dantesi and Sard Cade from WeHurt, and we're going to ask them a couple of questions about this year's tournament. First off, guys, how has your tournament experience been so far? I've enjoyed it immensely thus far. Uh, I, I think uh, anyone that's that knows about our team and knows about um, what we what we're doing with the stream team, um, we're all new to the tournament that we've made it this far has blown all expectations. I think for everyone that's been ex what they've expected of us and for the team ourselves, we're, we're just kind of flabbergasted we're this far. <laughs> we've exceeded our expectations by just a huge margin. It's just been so much fun. All right, cool. Um, how far did you guys think you would, you would make it? Just out of curiosity. Um, well, personally, uh, I thought we we're going to be one and one the first weekend, and then we, if we might make it to Sunday on the second weekend, maybe. I, I don't really know. Um, one thing that we, we had kind of interesting from our practice partners in Exodus is that we didn't realize just how much we were practicing in comparison to normal tournament practice. So I guess we were in, we were in a tournament shape that we never really expected to be in comparison to others that was, yeah. I, I think, far beyond the amount of practice people were putting in so it's just it's amazing that we 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 got as far as we did but then again it maybe it's not as surprising as you might think well the hard work surely paid off so absolutely so the next question i want to ask you guys uh what was your what was a match that you were really happy with where everything kind of went your way and, and everything worked out um and on the flip side was there a match that you were really disappointed with your performance in where you think you could have done anything better and, and kind of made fundamental mistakes that cost you that match or, or made the match harder than it should have been? I think that the match that went the best for us was the third match on the fourth day um, when we uh, took our VAR comp out. Um, that, that seemed to work the best from what, we, from what I noticed at least. Yeah. Um, as far as personal performance, and I feel our um, our pilot performance, um, our match versus ISN, um, I would call that a, a composition victory. Um, my execution personally wasn't all that great. Um, if if you if you listen to a lot of the guys, they'll they'll like right after a match, they'll they'll start pointing out a lot of really small mistakes. But it's not the small mistakes that are important. It's, it's kind of like bigger ones. For I mean, for me, I was. More, I was like kind of seeing that, and I didn't have my watch list up. Just as an example, that was that's kind of a, a big error for me. Yeah. But um, we still, you know, we still performed really well. We still won that one. As far as um, as matches that uh, went very well for us, and I was really happy with every time we've taken out our Marauder missile composition. I've, I'm, I'm constantly really proud and amazed at how well we we execute with it. So b versus both Hasina, uh, Hasina Thomas and. Uh, and Cobalt's when we uh, we took that out, yeah. I it, it made me really happy how we performed. So are you afraid? Are you afraid that in future matches that is just going to be banned out and you won't be able to use that again? Um, well, we definitely have a lot of tools in our um, in our kit, so it's it's not really a concern that's going to be banned out. Um, what I'm more afraid of is um, either that um, a team that we're going to be going up against has figured it out and have something that we haven't expected that's going to deal with it effectively yeah. um, or that uh, we're going to trade a match where we lose and Rod will win the match and then we're going to have a, like a best of five if we get that far on Sunday or best of three on Sunday where that tool in our toolkit would have been really useful and we don't have it anymore which is a really cool part about the tournament rules I thought yeah. that was neat All right. so the next question I want to ask you guys do you have an arch nemesis team that you would consider being like, this this team is the bane of your your existence. That you you're you kind of can't wait to rematch. I know you're now a you're now a new tournament team, so this might not 
particularly uh, apply particularly well here, but is there any team that, that you would consider to be your arch nemesis that you would want to fight again, that you've maybe already fought, or, or a specific team that you would really like to fight to see how you do against? Uh, I think Dentessi and I would agree, as, as far as that goes, it would actually be our practice partners in Exodus. Yeah, like, absolutely, if, Exodus. It, if, if there's anything, like, if, if there's been any woes we've been having with uh, trying to figure out banning and everything, it's, it's our practice partners, because they know everything about us. We, yeah. we never held anything back. So, uh, I mean, we've come up with some, some new stuff recently with them, so, like, the, uh, the banning isn't going to be as, I think, boring if we actually do end up, say, going up in the finals against them. I mean, it, it, it probably would have been a dummy off if we didn't figure out some stuff, like yeah. stuff like every single, single match. But uh, uh, yeah, definitely, definitely Exodus. Uh, we're, we're really hopeful for them to push through uh, this weekend. All right, cool. So next question. Is there anything clever or, or neat in the tournament that you guys did that we maybe didn't notice? So something that you guys did behind the scenes with certain fitting or a certain module or, or a certain way you flew that we didn't pick up on and uh, that you would like to point out and, and kind of put the blame on us for not picking that out. <laughs> no, I, I think you guys eventually picked up on, on everything like uh, MW deactivating on a Marauder eventually during a match. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah I mean, I, I will agree that it, it is kind of surprising that other teams didn't really think about that. Like that moving with the Marauder might be a thing, but um, <laughs> it's something that came out to us pretty early on when we were testing out Marauder comps that that was important. Um, it was also very interesting that Rapid Lights came up um, in this tournament uh, format, especially it, the the burst potential for them, the fact that with the with uh, ships that are bonus to missiles, they tend to be very mobile, and yeah. um, if they have the projection bonus, they can stay at range. So, like for example, when we were in our match three uh, match against Cobalt, so if you're looking at like the attack, defense, control bars, where our team was like massively behind on like defense and attack that are low, everything like that, but just because you can um, burst down a lot of support very early yeah. on, that are the only things that can really take out those ships, it works really well, and it you have all the time in the world. The 10 minutes is all the time in the world to uh, finish up the match. Mm. But other than that, I, I, don't, I don't know if we've done anything particularly clever or revealed anything particularly clever. Okay, cool. So, next question. Do you have any advice to future tournament pilots? Maybe somebody that watched the tournament and thought, hey, I'd really like to do that. Do it. There's, <laughs> there's no other way of getting around it. I mean, if you if it's something that interests you, then then do it. There's no uh, other uh, uh, learning strategy that uh, is most effective than just doing it. Yeah, yeah. I I I definitely agree that just one having the uh, having the um, the drive to to get in there. I mean. If you're interested in it, get some friends that are interested in it. I mean, the Neo is a format that is exactly that. Just get some friends yeah. um, and go do it. Um, the, the other thing that I would say that um, has put it, us in this tournament shape is uh, buddy up with another team. It, it doesn't matter. I, I, like, it, it definitely would help tremendously if they're tournament veterans, I yeah. would say. But um, buddy up with another team that can, that can field um, the full tournament um, numbers, like so 8v8 for the Neo format. Yeah. That way, at the very least, whenever you're doing practice, you're able to test out your comps in an appropriate um, fashion where you're not like limited for numbers of people, and you actually get the full feel of whether or not the, the entire composition is going to synergize well enough or not. Yeah. Yeah, some good advice. And, and I hope to see more kind of newcomers bringing us some upsets like you guys have done so far in this tournament. It's been a lot of fun to watch. Um, lastly, I want to ask you, do you have any shout-outs to any people that may have helped you, that, that may have performed particularly well, um, any fans, any, any followers, or, or so on that you want to give shout-outs to? Uh, I just would say the entire stream community as a whole, because without them, we wouldn't have been able to uh, uh, fund this experience and uh, give them the content that uh, they find interesting. Yeah, all, all of my energy, I think, for just about everyone that's part of the team has been focused on trying to make a, a really good viewing experience for uh, yeah. the CCP stream viewers and also our, our own regulars from our own streams. 
Um, in addition to that, that shout out, um, El Diablo with Exodus, uh, we would definitely not be where we're at today with, uh, um, with the, in the tournament. Um, and uh, I, I would like to give a shout out to uh, ISN. I think uh, they're in kind of a similar position to We Hurt as far as blowing past expectations. I don't really know the, the, the members of their, their team, but I think they've been executing incredibly well. Yeah. So, I mean, big out shout outs to ISN, and I hope they, they too um, make it further into uh, the tournament this weekend. All right. Um, I believe that is it, guys. Uh, I'll, I mean, I wish you, I'm going to wish you luck in your next matchup, and uh, we'll see how, you, how it goes. So thanks for All giving right. us this interview. Excellent. Excellent. No thanks, bro. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. See you. Welcome back from me, awkwardly staring at a camera for 10 minutes. Uh, awesome interview with the We Heard guys, uh, Sard Cade and Dan Tessi, giving us a little insight into how this tournament experience has been mm -hmm. for them. Um, they had some really good points that actually speak to what you were saying earlier, um, where you said you just have to practice a lot. And they didn't realize until they were in the tournament that they mm -hmm. were practicing a lot more than other teams. They were like, oh, wait, wait, you're not supposed to practice this much? Wait, wait a minute. So, yeah, I mean, th you put in that level of practice and have uh, just basically some good, competent pilots, which just about anyone can be a good, competent pilot with yeah. a bit of practice, um, you will do quite well in a tournament setting. You'll definitely be well above average. <laughs> Most people uh, show up, or maybe you're one person controlling eight different clients. Yes, that, that I mean, great, like, definite points for daring yes. on the uh, Team Cube. I even made Didn't a sign. Then you guys have signs, yeah. Yes. I want to yeah. see your so signs. This is my sign. Oh, uh, okay, I'll get, yeah. my, get my sign I, out. You'll see, I got partway through coloring in all the letters, and then I got distracted. <laughs> and went and did something else instead. You, you also tried to... Like, I got all artistic. I'm not sure, I'm not sure how the... The cube actually does that. I have mm -hmm. I have a slightly see mine's mine's more a sports <laughs> theme poster, uh, and that's that's a uh, that's thingy there, uh, and it's it's dunking. We hurt. Yeah, that's the dunking. That's the dunking that we're gonna see. Uh, we saw a little bit of it in the first match, and I think we might see a 2-0 in the second match. But uh, everyone has a fair chance. Everyone same rules. Uh, it's just whoever puts in the war more work, uh, the better pilot, and the more skilled theory crafter. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm still lost as to what we are going to do to deal with those stealth bombers. Because, like, right now, they've been up against them for... what they, they went against them in the first match against Warlords. Then they swapped them out for... Sabers. Uh, for sabers, yeah, yeah. where they just kind of a more standard. And then uh, now the first match of thingy. So they faced it twice, and yep. they doesn't like it doesn't look like they have any counters ready for it. And they've watched turn left use them as well. So yes. they've seen a couple of matches now with these kind of bomber setups, um, or turn left, of course, be the thingy team. Um, and uh, it just really is something I think they're having a hard time figuring out what to do to counter it. So, so we'll have to see what they pull out of their hat to do uh, go for their. At this point, it's a hail mary. At yeah. this point, this is whatever they're bringing here. This is their what their best option they can think yes. of to counter. So the water is angry, yep. and uh, we won't have to uh, wait any longer to see what they bring for this potentially final match for them in the tournament. Yep. If they lose this, uh, with then Thingy going up, facing against Warlords in the finals. Or the beginning uh, of an epic comeback story yes. that will be told in legend and song. Let's get wait, our predictions what? in. I don't think so, um, <laughs> um, As awesome as it would be to see we Heard take this moment and go for the big comeback, I... I have to go with my brain. I do think Thingy is going to take this. I'm going to go with uh, the uh, short destination stop for the We Heard Hype Train. I'm going to pick Thingy to 2-0, this best of three. Man, yeah. that really doesn't work with a headset. No, it really doesn't, but I'm still going to have it on because I'm going with We Heard.